Hello, hello, Forefront family. Happy Monday. Welcome to another open studio with the W3CR. This is actually our second open studio of the first cohort, and we are joined by our resident creator, Allie. Hello, Allie. How are you, my friend? Hello. I'm great. Thanks. Great to see you. We are also being joined today with um, Entez. Entez is, uh, will hopefully be joining us very soon, but Alex, unfortunately, is feeling uh, under the weather, so Alex will be taking a break for this week and then coming on starting the third week again. So she'll be, the last week of her residency will actually be um, during the first week of the second cohort, fam. So definitely keep an eye out for that. While we wait for Entes to show up, um, Ali, how, how did your first week of the residency go? I know you and I jammed a little bit about this on Friday when we had our one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, now you've had the weekend to kind of think how things went. Yeah. And it's always nice to have a little time just to decompress and really kind of reflect. So it was a good restful weekend taking a few days off. I mean, your brain never takes, you know, all the time off from a creative project, but, you know, stepping away, especially when a lot of things can be digital, stepping away from the computer over the weekend was really helpful and getting outside and seeing people. Um, so the first week I feel like was really great. I mean, I feel like I live and breathe play-based learning and open-ended play. And I um, don't normally get to share that enthusiasm with people who are outside of, not that anyone's outside of the play space, but kind of outside of the early childhood education space. So really being able to share some of the approaches that I take with children and some of the things that I believe about play that I think are really universal truths and um, yeah, discussing them with people who might not have that be at the front of their mind every day. So having the Twitter space was really great and um, putting materials into people's hands on Friday during our play date was a lot of fun. It's always great to see adults reconnect with um, what it's like just to like not have any directions and everyone say like, it's okay that you don't know what you're doing. So that's a really important part um, of play. And it's an important thing for me to bring into my just everyday life, right? So like this project is quite organic um, and having the time to really reconfirm those values of play and that those can be at the center and that I don't need to compromise those values was a really important part of last week for me. So that's kind of where I ended up um, in my reflections, uh, really feeling like, yeah, like this is a good place to be people. Others agree with it, whether or not they want to, you know, they can choose how much they may or may not participate with a project like this, but, um, yeah, the, those values are um, shared amongst people who also had childhoods, basically. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we, the team, the community circle team had uh, a jam session earlier this morning. We were saying, you know, you could have, it, it would have been so easy for you to have started off the residency with like lo the logistical to do's about yes. setting up this play library. But instead, like you said, you, you started with Twitter space. We talked about open-ended play. You welcome that community dialogue. Then you had a play date. Uh, it was a small group, but it was intimate. I, I watched, I watched the, the session async and I was just delighted by it. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, your, your intention and the, and the reason why you've kind of taken this summer residency in with kind of setting the stage first, rather than immediately jumping in and sharing things about your logistical to do's. Yeah, I think I've tried to, in my history of trying to create things, I find either like projects or like working on something creative myself in my home. Um, I think it's easy for your values to get compromised. Um, mm. I think it's easy to kind of forget that grounding base of like why you're doing what you're doing, because we live in a world full of information and you're supposed to be doing this and you're supposed to be doing that. And mm. I know there's, um, I wanted to really make sure that I was setting that tone for myself and that the feedback that I would get from the forefront community and the people that I'm trying to draw in just to create a community around this idea, I want to make sure that we are clear on what those base values are and that that is something that if I'm making choices either like in these spaces over the next few weeks and I'm saying, I think we're going to go this way. Someone can say, oh, that doesn't really seem like I wouldn't have expected that choice. Tell me more about that. And I either have to justify what I'm doing or I have to say like, it, it helps me reflect a lot. So I think really I've wanted the time to say, 
um, here's like the articles, the poems, the things that have inspired why I am approaching play-based learning in the way that I am. And to really kind of curate that collection of ideas so that whenever someone new comes into this community that I'm trying to create, I can say, start here. This is what we like believe at our core. And Arena has been a wonderful place to start doing that. So I do have to say that experience has been really valuable because just putting together a Pinterest board or putting together, I don't know, like it's helped me say, oh, this is a thing that I revisit constantly. So here it is. And I can direct people to that and also say, and I'm also looking at these other people's ideas. And so it's just such a valuable tool. So that's why I started without rushing into saying, how do we create a tokenized community? That's a part Mm. of this, but it's Mm. more important that we know what we're about than to code a token right now. Yeah. Yeah, I resonate deeply with that. Thank you so much for Mm. for sharing that. Um, I, I'm going to read something. I was, I was watching the, the play, the play date on Friday, Allie. Mm. Uh, I'm going to read this. This is not verbatim. It's kind of me, me uh, frantically typing as you were talking. Sure. Um, But (laughs) Steph was saying uh, how she loves online experiments too. And then your response, which I absolutely love, you're like, yes, web three is just a weird, big online experiment. Um, This is what, this is what I find so interesting about web three. I like the playful ethos of it. I think it's possible to find some shared value around play. People are trying to design really playful ecosystems for people to gather in communities around. How do we create a shared collection of materials that can move around a community and get people to tell stories about that so that we can keep increasing the value and pulling people in without it having to be anything that costs people a lot of money or makes one person a ridiculous amount of money. I'm trying to create a equitable community based system. And then finally you finish that off with, and it's nice to do something with your hands while you're chatting about something. This was just beautiful. I feel like so much of like your, your, your whole, your ethos and your philosophy sort of encapsulated in this, in this, in this quote that I just pulled out. Was this what really, Hey, Entez. Hello, my friend. Hey, Entez. Hi, hi. hi. Sorry. I don't, uh, I don't try hi. to interrupt the, the conversation. Sorry. <laughs> No, I didn't see you. I was reading in another screen. Uh, we were we were jamming about uh, Ali's uh, play date last Friday. So uh, just want to welcome you and Tess to the forefront, fam, to the open studio. But let me just finish this one thought with Ali, and then we can jump in together as as a as a cohort. Um, so Ali, I wanted to ask you. I mean, there's so many things that I could kind of pull the thread on there. But was this essentially what really drew you into Web three? What you described as this ethos of playfulness. Did you, this light bulb moment came on and you're like, oh my goodness, Web3 is trying to build these playful, these playful experiments. This is for communities to gather around. This is, this is, these are, this is my people. Is that what sure. happened to draw you in? I think that was definitely part of it. Like, you know, when you, I'm sure anyone who's listening right now or in this conversation, the two of you too probably have this, had this experience where you're like, oh, Web3 blockchain. And you like read something and you're like, I don't understand that at all. And then you read something else to help you understand that thing more. And like you watch something and then you follow someone on Twitter and you're like, I still don't get it. Um, And you realize that everyone is just, I talk about it in my, with the kids that I work with, I talk about it as like, you know how when you're cooking spaghetti, you can tell that it's done by throwing it at the wall. And if it sticks, then it's done. And so I use that metaphor all the time. Like, let's just throw spaghetti at the wall and maybe it's going to fall off. And if it falls off, that's fine. So I really felt like web three was a place where a lot of people are, are doing that. So it was a combination of that and the, the way that organization and, um, group like collaboration and ownership. So, and I'll talk about that more when we talk about what's going on this week, but that playful, I mean, I see it everywhere. No one knows what they're doing and people are just being vulnerable and saying, sure, I'll try Mm -hmm. it. Like, what's the risk? especially when it comes to creative web three, I'm not talking about, you know, obviously the, the bend of web three blockchain. That's like, can I make more money out of my money? That doesn't interest me in the slightest mm. bit. Um, but mm. the creative part does. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, mm-hmm. Ellie. So welcome in You are outside in the beautiful sun. It looks like. Yes. It's crazy. Cause it's winter, but we got uh, wow. this sun is crazy. <laughs> I mean, my bag is the peace. Yes, we see the peace, the beautiful peace. Well, my friend, before let's let's actually kind of re um, 
before you hopped on, Intez, I was jamming with Ali about how the first week of the residency went. Mm -hmm. You, Intez, my friend, you were incredibly busy. You, you had three sessions with the community. You took us everywhere. You took us in the studio. You drew portraits of two community members. And then you took us out on the street with you on your bicycle um, to look at this huge installation in a tunnel. So I've asked Ali to do a little bit of retrospective. Oh, you're there. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. So Entes, tell us a little bit about how your first week of the residency went. It's pretty... Uh, um... I'm pretty happy because it's my first time to do a residence like that in Web3, you know. So, so for me, understand this this new space for me because it's all new, right? So give me another opportunity. So that's the reason because I'm trying to do anything like crazy stuff, like do this and mix it with my my artist life and my web three artist life, you know? So, cause it's two places for the web three, you need to stay, sit down in in your studio and doing uh, whatever you do. But like an artist, I'm moving around like every time. So, mm -hmm. so I'm particular like me, like I'm street artist or or graffiti writer too, so I'm painting all the time. So for me, it's very important to uh, be part of this and get, uh, take the opportunity, like the most, uh, get to the residence the most time I got, you know, because with mm -hmm. that, I can do more proof to do different kind of things. So now I know it's possible to do stuff like that and do the video. Maybe in the end, I can do an NFT of this piece, you know, like give me another ideas. It's not only mm -hmm. improving now, like playing like every day. So for me, that's important in the residence. Amazing. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Entez. So we will get back to you, Entez, and we'll ask you a little bit about what you have in store for the Forefront family for this week, your second week of the residency. But let's turn to Ali. I'd love for uh, Ali to give us a sneak peek uh, what's been on your mind. If you have another Morning Pages, I'd be so keen to hear it after your last <laughs> right. uh, Morning Pages. It's so I... beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You know, this morning, my Morning Pages were more like what Alex described where some days you're just like, I haven't done laundry in a couple of days and like, I should probably call my mom, you know, like it wasn't, you know, really residency based stuff, but I do, um, you know, I kept a little bit of a journal last week and I just kind of made a space where I could, uh, kind of revisit and keep, um, keep going in. Um, but, um, we kind of already reflected on last week. So I want to tell you a little bit about this week. So, um, this week I'm thinking about how I create a community or how I cultivate. I, I'm really trying to shy away from the word that like I'm the one making it, right? Like so mm -hmm. I, I, I'd like to cultivate a community of people around these shared values. So play is one of our shared values, but also I'm thinking a lot about gift economies. So I've started mm -hmm. reading and listening to people talk about gift economies um, specifically. And so you know, historically, um, you know, we see them as something that has existed in a lot of indigenous cultures here in the Pacific Northwest. You know, there's a tradition of the potlatch, right, where you bring um, you bring something to share. You bring more than could possibly be needed and you don't expect anything in return. And this is something that when um, the indigenous tribes where I live, it's Coast Salish land. And when it was um, mm. colonized, they um, didn't allow people to function to have to continue their gift economies because they wanted to put money at the center. And so I think a lot about money and wealth and all these things that we're so convinced that we need so much of. And so I was um, mm. listening to an interesting podcast this morning um, on the gift economy, which you're going to hear me talk about a ridiculous amount this week. Um, but I <laughs> loved this. Um, I loved this, this thing that I heard this morning was they were saying wealth distributions where people are taken care of in a different way. So a gift economy is a different distribution of wealth. Wealth is many, many things, not just money. Money is the cheapest and it burns the quickest out of all of them. 
So mm-hmm. really, what else can we value? What else can we share? And how can we create communities, cultivate communities in which we're not giving with the expectation of getting back? You know, or like, that's not, we're not saying like, I give and what are you going to give back to me? Right. Because mm-hmm. a lot of that is really intangible. A lot of the things that I've received in my life have just been like, kindness and time and attention. Like those are the things that I value so much more than money or material things. And so creating a place where we, we know that we value childhood. We know that we value play and that there are wonderful materials that we can use to experience play. And what if we shared all those things as a community, but it's just more than just the toy library, right? It's more than just the play library because it's creating a space where we start to talk about the values that we have that we can share in the toy library, but that can kind of like, you know, go out and make a larger web around just that specific thing. So that's really what I'm thinking about this week. I'm thinking about um, gift economies and cooperatives and specifically the way that we can create things that aren't necessarily just businesses or nonprofits. And it's a tough thing to build in a world that is built on capitalism. Like what's your idea and how can you profit off of it? And I think we could do better than that. Like we could all have enough, but we don't, we're not in systems in which we can practice that. So if I can create a small system (laughs) where we can start to practice that, that's interesting to me. So that's really where I am. And tomorrow I'm hosting a a discord chat and I have a a very short piece. If anyone's thinking about joining me to read beforehand, and it's specifically about matriarchal gift economies and how Mm. women have historically been ones who understand what it means to give and receive much, much differently than just uh, moving money around. So, yes. Oh, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. And Tiz, I saw you, I saw you, Shaking your head, yes. nodding, Sounds nodding vigorously. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> it sounds amazing, actually, mm. Ali. I um for your next week, I guess I I'm reflecting on this question. I want to ask you because I, as I was telling the community circle team uh, earlier today, you and I have had uh, quite a few conversations at this point, uh, even prior to the residency. But I felt like it was only after I saw your play date. Um, that I really began, like some of these nuances really began to sink into me. And I was like, every single time I listen to you, it seems like you're, you're, you're constantly moving around the center and taking snapshots of this play library vision from different mm-hmm. perspectives. And so every single time that I spend more time with you, even if it's a sink, you'll say something. And I'll be like, oh my God, a little <laughs> bit of the vision sinks into me. And there was something you said about you wanted to actually imbue uh, play the values, play-based values into the catalog. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I wanted, I wanted to kind of see like a moment of playfulness. Like if I, if I was curious about that, you know, what, what exactly are play-based values? Like, like give me an imagination of that. Like, wh- what does that look like to Allie? You know, sure. it, it's not really a conceptual determination, but what does it mean to have play-based values? What are those to you? Sure. Um, to me, I think over the years that I've worked with children and families, um, the thing that it, one of the things, many things that it kind of circles around has to do with the process. And I'm sure that Entes could agree with this, that the value of the process of it's not about knowing where we're going. We have no idea where we're going, right? Like there's, I think I've already quoted Octavia Butler in one of these sessions, but she says, um, she has this wonderful book. If you haven't read, it's called Parable of the Sower. And there's a sequel called Parable of the Talents. And she says, um, uh, uh, gosh, um, everything you change changes you. Uh, everything you touch, you change. Mm. Everything you change changes you. God is change, changes God. And this is not in like a, you know, in any, any sorts of Christianity or any specific, you know, religion. I don't want to say that, but I think we don't know where we're going to be. And I think that enjoying the process, and Entis has used that exact phrase, like enjoying the process is is what play is to me, you know? And if mm. we can approach things more playfully, Um, I think we can find a sense of peace in the everyday in a world that is absolutely, that can seem absolutely terrifying and hopeless on some days. Um, And so, yeah, it really, that's the core value, really valuing, like, it's okay if we don't know where we're going. And a traditional business or even a nonprofit, they say, okay, here's our three-month roadmap. Make sure we get these tasks done in three months. And yes, you need to have goals and direction and but you have to enjoy the process as a really valuable thing. So if that answers your question, 
play to it me is, is process. Mm. It does. I love it. Thank you, yeah. Ali. Sure. So, and Tez, my friend, would love for you enjoying the sun, standing in the sun. Tell us a little bit about what the Forefront community can, uh, can look forward to you with the, with the residency this week. So about the community come to come to my participation in this week, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what do you have planned? Uh, the plan is, is crazy this week, <laughs> a little <laughs> bit more crazy because this week we paint somebody off the street from here. So we do a video, a little video about some faces, workers, I'm going with the camera in my bike around filming persons and take a screenshot of the video and do the drawing. Uh, this is for uh, the first day. And the second day, we got two crazy things. Because the first is paint one, uh, one face done in my, stu in my studio in the street. And the second is come to here and stay with the process we're working right now. I can show you a little bit, one second. So, so it's part of this huge thing. We, we got the opening of this thing, 20, and we include the residents in the, in the opening of this huge, Thing, two, and actually here we got space to paint some faces, right? So, right there, mm -hmm. I can do whatever I need because it's my idea, <laughs> and I <laughs> always is a process. So, the and learning yes. that's that's very important, Ali. Thank you. Yes, yes, the process is the the best thing to do something, and to learn about this actually. So you see, my people is working now, putting the posters. We do these posters. It's like the poster is coming for the next week, actually. Our posters, like from the residents. So we, with that, we am starting to put some some posters here too, and be part to the my art life and the web tree life. So in, this is the deal for this week. Excellent. Love it, Antez. Uh, I actually, I, I'm thinking of something you said uh, during your first session in your studio. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm trying to find it. I loved it. Uh, yes, you said I, this is when you were, you were saying that you study chemicals, mm -hmm. you, you use them to create new sculptures. You said, I do an investigation about the materials. That's actually the most important part of my work. It's not only the art, but it's also the previous investigation to do the art piece. Yes. Uh, I, I love that. And I, this is, this is what Ali was talking about, right? Yes, I, I love that sure. you're so, um, you value the process so much, my friend. Um, well, I want to, uh, like I said, Alex is not here to join us. We miss you, Alex. If you're out there listening to us, we hope you feel better soon. But I wanted to open up some time. Mm -hmm. We're about five minutes under half past the hour. Um, I see Dwayne the Jock Ronson in the studio. If the community, the Forefront fam, has any questions for Ali and Entes, looking forward to this second week of their residency, please drop your questions in the chat. Or you can even call in live. You know the drill by now. I just, while we're waiting for someone, and Tiz, I just wanted to say, I love the, the idea of like, I thought a lot about when I work with kids, getting to know materials and with kids, I taught, I say like making friends with the materials, right? So like I, I taught, I work with all these parents and families that will say like, okay, like we, I tried to give them paint, but like they made this huge mess and like, I couldn't control it. And I want to be like, <laughs> yeah, like it was the first time you gave them paint and paint is messy end of sentence. You know what I mean? Like it's not, <laughs> so I think it's so important to think about like the journey that we take with things, right? Like that, like you have to just keep returning to those things. And every time you return to it, even you as someone who's well versed in the material of paint, like probably still learn something every time you use it. For sure. It's, it's like me, my life is the same. 
because I got two kids. <laughs> so with that, I understand <laughs> completely what happened with the mess. So, but I'm pretty happy about that. But in the artist life, or for me, it's, my life is like that because I'm learn uh, in the street. My my parents as professors, both of of that. So I understand what happened with the process to learn, right? Not only like, mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm, I'm a study art, um, I'm a painter or a sculptor. No, I can do whatever I need because art is ideas. And this is the most important thing, <laughs> ideas. If you got idea for told something, uh, you need uh, the specific material to do that part. So with that, you need to stay alert to investigation with different kind of materials and experience too, because that's what happened yeah. with the artist, right? And in the regular life yeah. too, is what happened with the kids when come to the bicycle or, or play some games or, you know, or stay alert in the street, you know, like some bunch is bunch of time uh, the same thing in your life. Why do you don't do it in the artist or your work? Do investigation. Do the same thing. I Every day is boring. <laughs> it is. It is. Yes. I love the idea of like being being alert to investigation, right? Like, yeah, being just yeah, being curious about stuff rather than just being like, I know it, I'm done, I'm done. Because no one's done. That's just that's that's you know, a ridiculous thing to say. <laughs> so, yes, never yeah, done. I love that. And curious mm -hmm. is the word. Curious is the best word in the Yes, curious. It's like yes. be be a kid for for life. You know, like Yes. That's a hundred percent. I love that. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. So, Entes, you said, uh, I'm curious, you said both of your parents were professors. Yes. Oh. And so, oh. was there, do you, do you remember something, do you remember, like, something specific that they would do when you were young that kind of planted the seed of embracing curiosity? I mean, did they, for instance, like, let you draw on the walls without yelling at you? Did they, what, what did they do that you think really kind of brought you up to be, like, this ever-curious, ever-learning human being? And how are you kind of translating that practice to your own children now? Do you have like your own unique twist when it comes to parenting? Or is it just kind of the wisdom that you took from your parents? You're kind of just no, reapplying it. My parents is words. My my father is professor of, <laughs> of math. So he don't understand oh. anything about art. Anything, you know, like <laughs> this thing is kill me. Like, yo, that, that shit is hard. You know? So that's, that's important for me because my parents gave me um, was discipline, mm. constant, you know? I'm, mm. I'm a pretty focused in my work because my parents broke my works, my drawings every day. So I need to do another thing to draw. And actually <laughs> when I got six years, my mom, question me like, yo, what do you, what do, you do when you grow up? I'm saying mm -hmm. straight, uh, artists in France. I don't know mm -hmm. why, but I did that. You know, I, t I tell my mom, that, oh, wow. yo, I'm, I did art, you know, I love it. So when, when uh -huh. it's my first trip to, to Paris in 2007, my mother crying in the airport, you know, oh. like, you know how you, oh. mommy, it's only a trouble. I return, you know, like, but, <laughs> but in all the story, shortcut for that wow. because it's, it's longer and strong. So my father gave me <laughs> discipline and, and, mm. and give me like different, different kind of disciplines. And here is mm -hmm. the word is necio. It's like a person try to do for whatever, whatever circumstance, uh, the finish is do the thing, you know? It's like me. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, 
I did this in Miami last December. Nobody know me there, <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. I do that mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Like I'm cross the line. Mm -hmm. I work mm -hmm. hardcore every day for do that. You know, it's like mm -hmm. practice, practice mm -hmm. and try to create something new because that's the thing. When my fathers told me I can do graffiti, I'm stay uh, doing graffiti because it's graffiti, you know, like I'm on the street mm -hmm. every day. I don't care about my fathers tell me this is my <laughs> this is my goal and cross the line. I don't care whatever person mm -hmm. try to stop me. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> I'm a fucking machine, you know, like, I don't care in anything. My father tried to stop me. I'm here. Do that shit. You know, like, that's my, that's how I teach my kids now. Like, mm. never stop. Like, you try mm -hmm. to do that, but I don't do drugs. I don't do a mm -hmm. distracting, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. stuff like try to put my my head in other way, I don't do it. In one time when I'm mm -hmm. in Spanish, I live uh, in one time I got a partner, and in that moment we do a lot of parties because here I'm pretty famous. So so the girls come and the parties come and the drugs come and alcohol come. Mm -hmm. In one point I say Shh, I don't do anything like that i'm stopped mm -hmm. right now and that's it mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. i'm focused on my mm -hmm. my goal what is my goal and my father gave me a huge bag in my back because when when i'm trouble uh, i call my father I'm like yo all is good and when they call almost finish my father tell me yo you represent peru Remember that mm. you are, mm. you got that, you represent Peru. So, and when the time and the travel come, is is, yo, you represent Latin America now. So no, mm. no, it's only Peru. It's Latin America now. So what's going on? What you do for do something more? And my father wow. pushed me to that way every time yeah. so now when i visit my father my father okay what's the next <laughs> so yo nigga i'm 40 now stop with this bullshit. <laughs> oh my goodness but oh thank you, you know, so much it, it, yeah this this is crazy because is these people <laughs> support me but with the mm -hmm. other way you know no, like, mm -hmm. yo, go paint that wall, don't problem. No, it's like, okay, you need paint there, do something crazy and break my mind, you know? So <laughs> it's completely different and hardcore too because put a lot of bags in my bag, you know, like, okay, yeah. I need to do my best in whatever choose, whatever chance, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you, my friend, Entes. I love, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I have a question from Blockchain Lugano. I would like to give this to both of you, if you don't mind, because I know Entes has spoken a lot about um, his, the political influence, the sociopolitical influences. He, we've talked about his favorite books. He's talked about the revolution being not just a political revolution, but a revolution of the next generation, a revolution of the youth. Ali, you've shared beautifully today that, and yesterday and Friday that you're not interested in, in starting something that is going to cost a lot of money or make someone a huge amount of money. You're, you're, you're interested in, in gift-based economies, equitable communities. Blockchain Lingano wants to know if there's any sort of specific political subject, um, especially given the context of current affairs, that's influencing your work or your project. And if you do have one particular political subject that's influencing your project, do you feel that you are entirely free to express yourself with regard to that uh, political topic or belief? Or are you conscious of holding back in some way? That's a really... Good question, Blockchain Lugato. It's a tough question. I don't know which of you would want to speak to that, my friend. Um, I can speak for a moment on it. Um, 
I think, yeah, I think living our values means we can't shy away from difficult things. Um, as lovely as this was to rest this weekend, um, we have also, we also just literally turned back the clock on women's rights in America. Um, and it's possible that other rights are not far behind and it's a difficult to feel so helpless and so hopeless, um, in these really trying times and to keep on, yeah, to have hope, to create, to be curious, to wonder about things. Um, I think it's important for people to not shy away from sharing their views on that. And there's nothing specific about the overturn of Roe v. Wade this weekend that makes me feel um, like I need to address that specifically with my project. But I think it's important mm -hmm. that we um, share our beliefs. And if people don't agree with those values, they can find another community to be part of. And I don't mm -hmm. say that I don't want to sound divisive, um, like let's just each get in our own bubbles. But I also believe that we have to, shared values could go beyond, um, you know, the specific things that we're talking about as creative communities. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I feel in a lot of ways, I'm not afraid to talk about the ways in which our child care and support systems are broken in the United States, mm -hmm. um, in a way where it, everything costs, everything is a business, your health, your uh, watching your children, um, everything somehow is tied to money. And so I feel like that's kind of the political bend that I have to my project. And I'm not afraid to talk about that. I, it, it's difficult to talk to some people. I was talking to my father <laughs> and just spoke about his dad and I'm explaining to my dad, <laughs> like, I'm just going to, I'm going to go back to my classroom in the fall. My job pays me the money that I need to do. And I am fine spending my time trying to cultivate a community that's going to share a bunch of things. This isn't something I'm doing in order to make money off of it. And I understand that this isn't the way that most people would make their life. I should be trying to figure out how I can get a job that pays me more money, how I can save that mm -hmm. money in my own little pool, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about gift economies this week, that's just, it's so connected with what I'm talking about, um, being against the ways that we have structured our world, um, in capitalism and the, how everything is tied to that. So that is my political act is making sure that we understand that we need to be more together rather than letting money rip us apart. Um, mm -hmm. which is what's happening in a lot of ways. So that's my small, my small piece that I'll contribute to my political, and I'm not afraid to talk about it, obviously. <laughs> so well, I, I sincerely appreciate you, Ali. I really do. I really do. And so thankful for your, um, for what you articulate and the position that you take very, it resonates deeply with me, my friend. And Tez, I want to turn it over to you. I know you will have something to say about this, my friend. Yes. It's in Peru <laughs> so strong, you know, like um, something like this, the person to give me this job told me like don't do political because this person <laughs> know me and i'm right in like the graffitis the words tell mm -hmm. that it's a political too because say something like uh breaking uh the stops uh something like uh be equals some it's political mm. but it's not no sounds like conf, uh, confront the situation mm -hmm. you know because the person when born is political because it's a person got different ideas to the other person so that's political and do art is political too so bunch of stuff is political but to my work, I'm studying a public school, and that's no regular here. That here is for poor people, so I learned too much there. So I'm trying to give the opportunity to other persons, so somebody like him can do can touch the sky. So mm. it's like a sample. I, I try to give a, an example to the people. I can do it. Why you do, you try you think you can do it, right? Because mm -hmm. the the idea, the the cap the capitalism and the white people here try to uh, pushing down every day 
to the dark people. Okay, so mm-hmm. for us, it's like very important. People like me touch the sky, because mm-hmm. if like uh, I get the the opportunity to do it too, so I did a lot uh, class, and when I did class, I'm be political too. So I'm staying in the <laughs> ghetto and tell these people, yo, I can do that shit. Why yo, you can do? I'm moving to the best place now with my family and get out to the ghetto and put my ass there. Only working, hard working, bro. No drugs, no anything. Do be focused and study, learn, learn, learn. When all my crew, when all my, my, uh, friends of this my art school get out and smoke joints and drink beers and get um go straight to the library i go straight mm-hmm. to the library and these people talk bullshit about me like yo you are uh, like um you are famous and you don't need this you know i i got a scholarship because I, I i did graffiti in the, in the street I never can pay my art school. So I tell my history to that people so that people understand completely what happened. I I can do that, the same thing. It's like mm-hmm. I can give these people a, an example and this fucking political. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm really you, excited about that. <laughs> oh, this is my no, life, oh my God, yes. No, don't don't apologize for for your passion. This is um, absolutely something that is a gift to us in the community. Eric has a question, and I know that Entes, you're going to have insight on this. Ali, I invite you to jump in if you'd like to. But this is something that Entes has um, has discussed. Eric says, "I often have the feeling that to be recognized as an artist, you need to have the same style or technique for a long time. You have to be known as the one who does X. This is not what I understand as an artist. You want to." change you want to grow and your art has to change and grow too how do you think about that Entez? so that's a good question because i question that kind of question every day to me because i'm jumping every time to other techniques mm-hmm. and other stuff but in the end uh, the first thing art is a necessary ne- necessity what is the word Necessary. Necessity. Necessary. Necessary. Yes, art is a necessity. So why you uh, stop that for do the same thing for a bunch of time? Now it's contemporary art. If you look what happened with the contemporary artists, jump to the other techniques every time. So what's the first thing? Learn. What's the second thing? Study. What's the, sec- the third thing? <laughs> practice and curiosity <laughs> that's it mm-hmm. love it ali my friend do you want to you want to add anything to this yeah i'll just like yeah like lift up what ente said i mean it's true it's just yeah it's curiosity and growth and it's not about getting better right that's not the word the word isn't better the word is just staying curious and yeah, playing with that process of it because, and yeah, I mean, if we're going to commercialize things and everyone says like, it looked like yes. this before, or it sounded like this before, I'm sure if Alex was here, she would talk about this from the point of view of a yes. musician where like, if you're creating, it can't just be to create the thing that you already created. Right. So like, how do you just keep on? Yeah. Like, yeah. Enjoying that process of it. So that's, but yeah. And to said it very well. Yes. Enjoying the process. Learn, study, practice, curiosity, right? Um, if you're not growing, you're not living. You said that too, Entez, my friend. If you're not making mistakes, you're just doing the same thing again and again. Yes, yes. Um, and, it is, it, and, and I feel like this is a commonality among the two um, artists and creators we have here. It's like what, what happens when the sort of financialization begins to subvert the, the reason why we're doing art is exactly what Ali said. Like, oh, no. Now I can't pursue a curiosity. Now I can't deviate from this because the market expects this of me. Um, and so this, this is, thank you so much for your question, your beautiful question, Eric. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions that I'm missing from our friends. 
It doesn't look so. Blockchain Lugano says, I love this Entez that you're giving back and showing others that they too can touch the sky. Yes. Um, we only have about 10 minutes left. Um, I'm absolutely free because I know you two are busy, busy, busy with your residency and your projects. Absolutely keen to let you go early if we can. But um, do you have literally happening with Drake right now? Eric says, thank you for the answers. Do either of you have any last words or comments to share with the Forefront fam uh, before I let you go? And I'm really, really looking forward to following along with your residency journey this week. Um, I'll, I'll say that I'm really inspired by Entez um, being out in the street, like just out there, just yeah. getting shit done. And I think <laughs> in times when, and it, again, like this kind of goes back to that political thing, you know, we can make signs and we can like tweet about things and we can like post things on social media, but like there are people all around you and you're in a community right now. And if you've got something to share, like get out and share it. And so next week, not this week, but next week, I'm really focusing on like how I can support really getting the word out about Play Library in my community. And I'm certainly going to spend some of my time just getting out in the street and playing with people. Um, and I'm really, yeah, inspired by just being able to get on my bike and just throw materials at people and see what happens. So, um, yeah, like it's a, it's a deeply political act just to get out in your community and do something that people are like, shouldn't you be in an office at a computer? Like, what are you doing? How are you even <laughs> contributing? Stop messing around, like get serious. And I think this is serious work and we don't get to see, this is serious work, like the learning and the doing. And it doesn't, it doesn't um, translate directly. Like you can't quantify it. It doesn't turn into like numbers or it doesn't agree with the market or whatever it is. So um, mm -hmm. it's so good just to know that, um, yeah, other people are, uh, lots of people are, but just being motivated to get out there and just get shit done. So thanks, Entez, as always. 100%. No, no, thanks How me. How about you, Entez? No, thanks me. Go <laughs> and learn this from, for the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers idea, give me that. So that's the goal. That's political, because Emory Douglas tell Emory Douglas is the graphic designer of the Black Panthers. So Emory Douglas tell, yo, go to the community. And if the community uh, stay with you, you you starting to base a movement. So that's what happened. We need move, go to the store, talk with these people, do a papers and give it to the kids and try to to motivate these persons to stop the, the regular life and understand what happened with the new life and open the eyes to to this old old stuff this person don't uh, try to show us right so for me it's like like that i'm learned that from memory douglas so thanks him <laughs> it's only, yeah. I'm, a no, I mean, we can, I'm a connection totally it, but it's that connection too it's like that thread right and no matter where you hear about it or like what it is like the more you get out and spread things around like the more chances are other someone out of a hundred people is going to be like oh I can do that right and so yes. like it doesn't matter if you don't touch everyone it's the same thing as like if you don't agree with me and you think that I should try and make money like you can have that thought or if you want to try and take what I'm doing and make it into a million dollar business like go ahead and monetize it but like we those threads and there's so much to look at in history people have been doing this work we're not the first people to live in these times we're not the first people to try and figure out how to connect with others and create community around ideas that might go against the grain. So yeah, like, I mean, I appreciate the reference too, like specifically to the Black Panthers and knowing that, yeah, people in history have been doing this and we have a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn from people who have already started these journeys. Mm. Sure. That's amazing. Well, well, thank you, my friends. Uh, I'm going to uh, say goodbye to the Forefront family just for a little bit. I think, Allie, your next, your next gathering is tomorrow. Is that what you said? Yes, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, so there's an article. It's like one and a half pages long. It's super short. It's about matriarchal gift economies. So if anyone wants to give that a short little read and join me just to talk about what that possibly looks like in our lives and what um, 
it could look like to create one or have that as a core value in a, a community. So that's tomorrow at noon Pacific. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So we have a week jam packed with community events with Ali uh, and the Play Library and Entes uh, working on Gadas Latinas and many other exciting things, crazy things, as Entes says. So we look forward to seeing the Forefront family on the other side in our discords. Um, including for Allie's event next week and the upcoming events. Thank you so much, Allie and Intis, for taking time out of your day and joining us on the open studio. Can't wait to see what you have in store for us. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye Intis. Bye, Bye Allie. Allie. Bye-bye. Bye, Allie. Bye, Intis. Bye, Caroline.